You're listening to a Shockcast original. Shock. The C word with Callista. So it's the second episode. Woo. Welcome back to the C word with me, Callista, where we get to talk to all your favorite content creators um, and find out what makes them so successful. So today, I've got someone who you've probably seen on TV. You've probably heard her on radio and she's forever obsessed with K-pop. She successfully mixes her passion with her work by bringing us the latest K-pop news to her Twitter followers or by editing herself into photos with her favorite K-pop stars on Instagram and even getting to interview them in real life. It's Hani Fadzil, a.k.a. A honey bunch. <laughs> hey, Hi. How was up? That's all good. So how have you been? It's been a weird year so far. Well, I'm, I've been pregnant. Yeah, I was busy focusing on myself and my growing self and the growing human inside my body. But other than that, it's all good. All right, well, you are living the dream, right? Creating content around your one true love, which is K-pop. And of course, now that even though you're pregnant, you can still be doing what you love, right? Yeah, I've always thought like okay you know what what if one day I get pregnant and I don't get to do anymore <laughs> well I'm growing would somebody want a pregnant MC on stage will it suit the image and I have to stop doing all of this and people forget about me right before uh, COVID I found out that I was pregnant and I think it's a blessing in disguise <laughs> that now events are like put on hold and I can just focus on being pregnant and focus on enjoying the journey and hopefully when um, everything gets back to normal I'm already back on my feet whether you like it or not there's an image behind everything right whether it's TV it's radio it's social media it's events whatever you choose to do there is a certain image to that particular subject and worrying about whether you will continue to fit into that image is is a legit concern yes of course if we're talking about K entertainment industry I started really early I was into K-pop maybe in 2005 2006 at that time not a lot of people are into K-pop here in Malaysia or around the world now everything's like boom 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 and like one after the other I have to make sure that I am up to date because it's part of my job so that people can really go to me if they they want to know something about K-pop so just a little background for those who don't know like I'm working in hits and honey how I met her she was working in ERA which is basically our sister station so she was just down the hallway and when I had to do a Asian show which is very K-pop focused I'm very new to K-pop and I knew nothing so she was my go-to person what does this mean is this news correct you know because you don't want to give wrong information right and that was such a big help fans are very particular when it comes to getting the facts right so for K fans it's just hardcore uh, so we just need to be careful because they want to make sure that if you want to deliver something about what they like you need to know what you're talking about rather than just splurting it all out and not knowing anything yeah actually that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you so like K K-pop is a very fan-focused industry. Like even the the idols are very fan-focused and the fans are like fiercely loyal. So how do you like express your likes and dislikes when you never know when someone will get offended? Like do you just play it safe? If I was not in the public eye, maybe I, I can just um, say anything on my social media and express my opinions, you know. But because I have a following where people would want to know what I feel and things like that. But I still have to be careful with my words and try to not fan anyone. So I try to be very, very careful and I try to be neutral. I mean, if I want to express my opinion, I have to make sure that it's not controversial. Do you feel like it stifles your your creativity and like your uh, way to like kind of express how you feel? Because like sometimes maybe the way you word things is not how they take it to be. You know what I mean? Like you're not trying to offend someone, but as a human being, you definitely like some things more than others. When it's always being taken as such a, a serious situation, do you feel like it stifles your your ability to create? I guess even when I'm 
so careful with what I say, people still get offended sometimes. So mm-hmm. I cannot control how people feel or how people interpret things. I, I'm trying to say something else, but you just misinterpret something. It's so stressful, but I have to calm down and not retaliate and be the bigger person by not <laughs> lashing out. I guess when it happens, I just have to ignore or there are times where it gets to me and I get so evil and I cry. That is how it is for someone who is new to like the K-pop fandom and something right you're not all knowledgeable about the situation so many different platforms are saying different things which one do you trust and which one is the correct one you want to please the fans by talking about it because they want you to talk about it but at the same time if you talk about it and you accidentally say the wrong thing you're gonna get attacked so how do you balance that you know what I mean like do you just completely stop talking about it Uh, no of course not I think it is our responsibility to convey Hmm. messages or news of course they want us to share more about their idols like I said we cannot control if they misinterpret our intentions because our intention might be okay oh my god I'm so excited I want to share something with you guys not knowing that okay maybe we have missed something or we misread something you know but I guess you just need to focus on the good because everybody has their own opinions and uh, you just need to be more transparent and sometimes just you can't be defensive all the time some of your content is editing yourself into like the K-pop photos right and I know like it brought you a whole new following from doing that because the edits are like super real but <laughs> also you did get a bunch of hate from certain K-pop stands as well so what makes you want to keep doing it despite having to deal with these haters? I, I'm doing it for the people who like it. I just do it for fun because I know other fans do it too. Even until today, some fans like comment on my old photos saying that, oh my God, this is so not real. That's why I highlight that it's an edit. But there are people who are always asking for more. Like, hey, where are all your edits? You know, like how do you do it? It has become a part of my Instagram identity I just continued doing it some photos can like I edit first little that I know that after that I would interview the real person you know dreams do come true that's also another problem because when I take photos with real idols now people are like is that edited <laughs> but that's why I always highlight my hashtag honey edit over there mm-hmm. so that people know when it's edited and when it's not okay and like so obviously one of your most loved content is like your K-pop fan cams as well right and this year we don't have any content so how are you kind of like replacing that content? Yeah, I do a lot of throwbacks now because I do miss concerts and I know a lot of people won't mind watching those videos over and over again as well. I just have to live with throwbacks. Okay, so um, being a content creator mainly focused on all things Korean, you've been on multiple sponsored trips to Korea and you've even been the main contact between some K-pop groups and Malaysia. Like you were the only one who got to like interview them or like host their fan meet. So how did it all begin? In and if someone wanted to kind of like go down the path, where and how should they start? I can say that it's luck, but behind those luck, I did work hard for it. Um, I made sure that people saw how important it is. I always said to myself, like, okay, you know what? One day I'm going to get to interview all these idols, you know, all these artists. I'm going to make it happen. And um, when I first started working in ERA, they had an Asian chart show as well. And I realized that the songs that they were playing was like, oh my God, so old and it was not up to date. So I thought like, hey, you know what? Why don't I use my expertise? My my advice is that if you have knowledge in certain things, who knows that you can actually use that as I mean, turn it into something good. K-pop is growing so big that there are a lot of opportunities that people don't realize. I mean, it's not just about meeting stars. It's about what you can accomplish with the knowledge that you have but you need to have the proper knowledge lah. it is all up to you and people laughed at my dreams and look at where I am now so you're also super active like especially like on Twitter and Insta stories and you're not afraid to like share a lot of your personal life I guess so 
how do you decide where to draw the line between what you want to share with your followers? You need to know when to keep quiet. Don't overshare because um, when you share everything, you're left with nothing. I need to also remind myself that if you keep oversharing, it's also dangerous. People can use those things against you. My advice to anyone who wants to be in this industry is that you have to be very patient with whatever feedback you get with everything you share. 2020 is like kind of taught us that even if it's not going to be used against you now, what is on the internet stays on the internet, right? Like the thing you have to think of when you post things. Huh? That's the world we live in now. So you always have have to be careful if you don't want things like this to happen then stay private speaking of being private you're now at 129,000 followers on instagram of course you can't deny that your tv and radio works what do you feel makes people want to follow you compared to others due to the pandemic right i actually have lost um 3, followers of course people will always want to know what you're doing and things like that but I think the main reason why people followed me was because I was always meeting um, their favorite stars you know and the insights of my job you know things like that so it made me realize that I have to keep um, making content especially on the Korean entertainment side I still try my best so that's why I still have my edits and things like that but if you want this to be your focus in life it's not that easy okay people need to understand that it's beyond getting free products maybe my followers are not that high it's okay because I still have another 129,000 people who still wants to see what I do so how did you learn what works and what doesn't for all the different social media platforms Forms. Like, is there a difference between the content that works on Instagram and the content that works on Twitter? The way of approach is so different. You know, of course, with Instagram, it's just photos and on Twitter with limited number of words. I guess Twitter feels more personal on my social media uh, platform on Instagram it's more of okay this is an update of a photo of me at an event or something like that you know so when it comes to like client posts like do you have a certain strategy like when it comes to the content you create for them like do you stick to a certain posting time or is there a certain look that always works how do you go about it I hold on to my principles where I only do postings on the things that I trust or use if the product I feel that doesn't suit me, I wouldn't do it even though it pays a lot because I want to make sure that it is as honest as possible. I think social media is becoming a very tough terrain to kind of like navigate. I find it kind of sad because it's come to a point where even your favorite artists are kind of like, they have to block out the comments. Because you're always going to have negative people, right? And if it gets to you too much, then unfortunately, you just can't read them. And it's sad for the people who are actually fans of you because now they can't interact with you. So I, I think when it comes to social media, like it, it, it has to start from us. So if we would like to interact with our favorite artists, we shouldn't go and leave negative comments about another artist. Yeah, and we can't control other people. So it's it just has to come from us. Huh? Being in the industry and being commented on, you have to keep reminding yourself that you can't let this get to you. It is okay to take a break from social media. It's also okay to like block people who are constantly negative because you don't want to sacrifice all the people who do love you and, and your content because of one person who is negative. If you retaliate, it's going to make things worse and then it's going to take a lot of your time and emotion. Yeah. And it's going to stress you out. Do you think it's going to change the way that you see social media? Like when, when it finally happens, when the baby actually comes out, do you think it's going to change the way that you look at social media and the content that you're going to create? Because your fan base is also, um, it's quite young, right? There's still going to be a balance. I guess the only change that will be, they might see photos of my baby. Um, they'll see updates on me being a mother. K-pop content wise, as soon as you can go back going to concerts and I'm still gonna go I'm just gonna be a mother but that's not gonna change who I am will you be one of those moms who creates a social media account for your your kid even if I do it's gonna be a private one all right so before I let you go like any advice like last advice for anyone who wants to do what you do like specifically you especially if they also love k-pop right and they want to be more than just a fan page because I know a lot of k-pop fan pages exist how do you make it a balance between like a very personal k-pop fan page I guess you can't take 
everything too emotionally. You need to get the facts straight. You need to know what your audience wants. Uh, research is very important. Knowledge is very important. And general knowledge is very important. It's not just knowing things about your bias or your K-pop group. You need to know what's happening around the world as well. Thank you, honey. I hope everyone learned something today, like especially if you like K-pop, because it's a very, at the same time, a very niche, but still a very mainstream subject. So, okay. Well, thanks, honey. Um, and of course, uh, we'll be back with a new episode next week. So, thanks for having me. The C Word with Callista.